Um, and then there's also the overall ANOVA table. So this gets a little bit more complicated. Now we have a row for, uh, for a brand and a row for formula, and we have p-values for each of them. And again, we're asking, are those uh, taus, any of those taus different from zero, and any of those betas different from zero? So it looks like we can reject the null that those taus are different from zero, but we can't reject the null that those betas are different from zero. Um, and again, we might want to compute that table by hand as well. So here's how it works. Um, this is very similar to the ANOVA table that we did when we were learning about ANOVA um, for regression. And we were running the, uh, the ANOVA function on a model. Um, we can find our sums of squares. Uh, instead of just having SSM, we have it broken down into SSA and SSB for our factor A and factor B. But we still have our SSE, we have our SST. Our mean squares are the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Our F value is the mean squares for a particular uh, level divided by the mean square error. Um, and then we find our P values from an F distribution. Um, I guess the other thing that's kind of new is the degrees of freedom are a little bit less complicated here. So um, our degrees for factor A are gonna be I, the number of groups for that factor, minus one. The degrees of freedom for factor B are going to be J, the number of groups for that factor, minus one. And then the error degrees of freedom are the I minus one and J minus one multiplied together. Um, and then the way that you find the sums of squares uh, for A and B, what you do is you find your group means minus your grand mean and you square that and you sum those up and then you multiply it by the number of groups in the other variable. So for A, I'm multiplying by J and for B, I'm multiplying by I. So let's make it more concrete by doing that suntan example. Um, so I think I was doing uh, brand as factor A and uh, formula as factor B. And so that means that I have uh, two groups minus one is one degree of freedom there. Here I have three groups. I have the solution, gel, and cream. So I've got three minus one, which is two. And then for the error, I've got one times two is equal to two. And then uh, for the total, I have I, which is two times j which is 3 minus 1 so that's 6 minus 1 is 5. So those are my degrees of freedom. So as I've done in the past um, I gave you th some of the sums of squares but you need to figure one out yourself. Uh, but sums of squares total up just like before. So I know that 355.6 plus the sum of squares of b plus 12.9 is going to equal 431.1. So if I add that 355.6 and the 12.9, I think that's 368.5 plus SSB is equal to 431.1. And then subtract 368.5 from both sides. And then I've got SSB is equal to 62.6. So I'll write that in, 62.6. And then uh, for the mean squares, we're going to take our sum of squares and divide by the degrees of freedom. So in this case, I've got 355.6 divided by 1 is just 355.6. Uh, then I've got 62.6 divided by 2, which is 31.3. And then I've got 12.9 divided by 2, which is 6.45. And then I can find those F values. I'm going to do my mean squared for A, 355.6 divided by the mean square for the error, 6.45. And that's 55.13, 
And then for the mean square B, 31.3, again divided by 6.45, and that's 4.85. Um, and if we wanted to find the p-values, we'd need to look in the upper tail of an f-distribution with uh, 1 and 2 degrees of freedom, or uh, 2 and 2 degrees of freedom. I'm not going to do that right now, uh, but again, you know, my guess would be that, um, that this one would be significant and that uh, the second one would not be. Um, just because of what I know about the F distribution, even though this would be pretty significant for a normal distribution, I know that the F um, is, is pretty different at small degrees of freedom. So um, we could talk about how to do that when we're in R if you wanted to actually find the p-value, but that's how you fill in the table. So just a little bit of uh, context related to the book. So when we started out today, when we were doing analysis of variance, and we were doing things uh, like with the one-way ANOVA, that's chapter five. Um, when we started talking about um, inference after ANOVA and uh, these different approaches to finding the T-star, some of that is in chapter five, but there's a little bit in section um, 8.2. I think that's where uh, Tukey's HSD gets brought in. Um, and then when we started doing two-way ANOVA, this is the stuff in chapter six. Uh, so I think I had you read 6.3, which was about um, finding the two-way ANOVA model. And so this example with the self-tanning lotion, that was related to chapter six. So I think those are all the concepts that you need for the ANOVA homework that I'd like you to be able to do. Um, I do have a little bit more content in R, so um, I'll do a short video of that as well.